Hello again. In the second part of blood, I want to talk about the white blood cells. Unlike the red blood cells, white blood cells or leukocytes have nuclei and a full complement of other organelles, but uh, they don't have any hemoglobin. We can classify the leukocyte as either a granular leukocyte, which contain vesicles that appear when we stain the cells, and a granular leukocyte, which contain no granules. In this picture, you can see uh, the white blood cells. We have five different white blood cells in our blood. Three of them, as you see here, uh, contain granules in the cell. In the first one, the granules are purple. In the second one, the granules are red. And in the other one, the last one, the granules are dark blue or dark purple. These three leukocytes are classified as granular leukocyte. If you pay attention to the shape of the nucleus of these leukocytes, the nuclei uh, have uh, different lobes, different parts. In the first one, you can see four different parts. In the second one, you have two different parts. And in the other one, again, you have two different parts. So the granular leukocytes have polymorphonuclear, they contain different lobes for their nucleus, and also they contain granules in the cell. We classify them as neutrophil, eosinophil, and basophil, and I will talk about each of them specifically for you. And the second group of leukocytes are called a granular leukocyte. As you see in these uh, two leukocytes, we don't have any granules in the cell. In the first one, your, the nucleus is kidney shape or bean shape. And in the second one, the nucleus is completely round. These two leukocytes are classified as a granular leukocyte. These are the real picture of the leukocyte. In the first three, uh, in the neutrophil, eosinophil, and basophil, you can see granules in the cell. Uh, and in these three, uh, you have polymorphonuclear um, nucleus, and the cells contain uh, different parts for their nuclei. But in the, the fourth and the fifth one, you only have one part of nucleus, and you don't have any granules in the cell. They are egg granular, and their name are lymphocyte and monocyte. And here uh, you can see uh, the formed uh, element in our blood. We have erythrocyte, leukocyte, and platelet. Based on their weight, um, they are uh, organized in the test tube. When we centrifuge our test tube, uh, and you can see that the erythrocytes are the heaviest, they are located at the bottom of our tube. After that, we have leukocytes, and then we have platelet. You don't need to memorize uh, the way of these leukocytes, but you need to know their percentage. Uh, and um, for the granulocytes, we have neutrophil, eosinophil, and basophil. They are lighter than a granulocyte and they are located on top of uh, the leukocyte as you see in this picture and uh, you need to know that the neutrophil are the numerous and uh, the most uh, leukocyte which we have uh, in our blood it's about 50 to 70 percent the eosinophil is about two to four percent and the basophil is less than one percent and for the egg granulocyte which are heavier than our granulocyte we have lymphocytes uh, the population of lymphocyte is between 25 to 45 percent and the monocyte which is 3 to 8 percent. The first group is granulocyte. After staining, each of the three types of granular leukocyte displays uh, some granules with distinctive coloration that can be recognized under a light microscope. Granular leukocyte can be distinguished as um, neutrophil, eosinophil, and basophil. They are larger and short lived than red blood cells. They have lobed nuclei, and all of them can do phagocytosis to different degrees. 
The first granulocyte which I want to talk about is neutrophil. The granules of the neutrophil are smaller, are very small, and evenly distributed, uh, and the color are pale um, purple in this color. Because the granules don't uh, strongly attract either with acidic dye or basic dye, we call them neutrophil. Neutral means neutral and feel means loving. They like neutral staining. Because of that, you can see uh, the color of these granules in light purple. The nucleus, as you see here, have more than two lobes. And we have up to five lobes of the nucleus. These nuclear parts are uh, attached together by very thin strands of nuclear material. When the cell age, the number of nuclear lobes increase because older neutrophil um, does have several differently shaped uh, nuclear lobes. We call them polymorphonuclear leukocyte. As you see in this picture, um, we have many granules in the cell. Some of these granules are called specific granules. These specific granules are specialized for invading the bacterial infection. So they are specialized when we have any bacterial infection. And also in this granulocyte, we have some azorophilic granules. We need to know that azorophilic granules are actually lysosomes, which we have in the cell. And you know that lysosomes are the granules which can do um, uh, digestion. They are the digestive uh, system of our cell. So this is the picture of uh, neutrophil. In the next uh, slide, you can uh, see the neutrophil. In the neutrophil, we have some specific granules, which you can see it uh, by a yellow color here. And uh, we have uh, these blue granules as azorophilic granules and the ingested material. As I told you, they contain the digestive enzyme. And you can see uh, the different uh, nuclear lobes here. In this picture, it doesn't show you uh, the connection of these nuclear lobes, but they are connected by nuclear material together. And um, the number of the nuclear lobes are between two to five by aging. The number of these lobes increase. And in the uh, other part, you can compare the size of red blood cells, which I told you is about seven to eight micrometer uh, with the diameter of neutrophil, which is about a 10 to 15 micrometer. So the white blood cells are much more bigger than our uh, red blood cells. The next granulocyte is called eosinophil. The eosinophil um, is uh, a large cell, larger than a uh, red blood cell, as you see here. And we have large uniform size granules within the eosinophil. And they are eosinophilic granules. It means that they like red color, red orange color uh, with acidic dye. And as you see here, the color of granules become red in this picture. The granules usually don't cover uh, the nucleus. So you can see the uh, shape of the nucleus clearly. And uh, our nucleus most of the times is bilobed. It means that it contains two lobes of the nucleus and they are connected together by nuclear strand. The eosinophil is very important to ending allergic reaction and fighting parasitic infection. And uh, in this picture, you can see the cartoon of the eosinophil. These are the red granules, the specific granules which we have, and um, the others are um, light red. They are actually the lysosomes which we have uh, in our uh, eosinophil. Our eosinophil contain a bilobed nucleus, as you see here. And when you compare the size of eosinophil and red blood cells, you see that the size of red blood cell is a smaller than eosinophil. And you can see the red granules uh, in this cell. 
This cell is specific for fighting with parasitic infection and ending allergic reaction. The next cell is called basophil. The basophil uh, is a uh, the uh, rarest leukocyte which we have, uh, we can um, sometimes we might not see uh, this cell when we check the slides uh, under microscope. Uh, the round uh, variable size granules of the basophil are basophilic. It means that the color of granules are dark blue to dark purple or sometimes black. And these black granules sometimes cover the nucleus, so you cannot see the shape of the nucleus very clear. The granules of the basophil contain histamine uh, and other molecules like heparin, and they are very important for mediation and regulation of inflammation in allergic uh, reaction, and I will talk about them uh, later uh, in lymphatic system for you. In this picture, you can see uh, the neutrophil. As I told you, the neutrophil uh, is a large cell, larger than uh, red blood cells. You can see different lobes of the nucleus, and the lobes here are three. So between two to five lobes of the nucleus is uh, for our neutrophil. Uh, as you see here, the granules are very lightly stained here, uh, and they are neutral in their color. Uh, this cell is a specific for fighting with bacterial infection. The next cell is eosinophil. You can see bilobed nuclei, uh, which is uh, connected together uh, by a very thin strand. And also in the cytoplasm, you can see red granules. This cell is uh, important for fighting with parasitic infection and ending allergic reaction. And the last granulocyte is called basophil. As you see in this picture, in the basophil, we have dark granules, dark um, blue or dark purple granules. They cover the nucleus, so you cannot see the shape of the nucleus very clear. This cell contains histamine, and it can start uh, inflammation. Uh, and uh, you need to know that inflammation is one of the good reaction of our body against different problems. I will talk about it later for you. The next group of uh, white blood cells are called a granular leukocyte or a granulocyte. In, the, in this type of cell, we don't have any cytoplasmic granules. The granules are, and um, only we have lysosomes, the lysosomes are very, very small and they are not visible under a light microscopic picture. Uh, because of their because of their size and also they cannot get enough staining. We have two types of a granulocyte. One type is called lymphocyte and the other one is called monocyte. Here you can see the lymphocyte. The nucleus of a lymphocyte is stained dark and it's around um, and uh, sometimes we can see a very a small indentation uh, in the nucleus. Let me draw the indentation. Uh, imagine that this is your cell and this is the nucleus and you can see a small indentation for uh, the nucleus. Sometimes we can uh, see that. The cytoplasm stain is sky blue and forms a very thin rim around the nucleus. As you see in this picture, we have a very thin rim of cytoplasm around uh, the nucleus. Lymphocytes may be as small as six to nine micrometer in diameter, or sometimes they are as large as 10 to 14 micrometer in their diameter. Although the functional significance of the size difference between the small and large lymphocytes is unclear, uh, the Distinction is still clinically useful uh, because an increase in the number of large lymphocytes has diagnostic significance in acute viral infection and in some immunodeficiency diseases. Uh, 
We have two types of lymphocytes. Some of our lymphocytes are called T cells. The T cells can directly fight with the pathogen and kill the pathogen. And the other type of lymphocyte is called B cell. The B cell should change and differentiate to the other type of cell, which we call it plasma cell. And then the plasma cell can make antibody, and antibody can deactive antigen and problem and disease. So the difference between T cells and B cells is uh, the way of um, their defense. The T cell can fight directly with the pathogen, but the B cells should change to plasma cell. The plasma cells create antibody and antibody can deactive antigen for us. Uh, in this picture, you can see the lymphocyte. Uh, you can see a round nucleus and a very a small indentation of the nucleus and thin rim of cytoplasm around the nucleus. The cytoplasm is light blue, as you see in this picture, and the granules are very, very small, and we cannot identify them under light microscopy. And in the other side, you can compare the size of lymphocyte and the red blood cells. Here you can see uh, the lymphocyte. You have two lymphocytes in this picture. Uh, they are nucleated, as you see here, and our red blood cells doesn't have any nuclei. Uh, and we have thin rim of cytoplasm for our lymphocyte. Uh, pay attention to the shape of red blood cells. Our red blood cells should be uh, completely round with a smooth border, and they should contain a central pale part. So these red blood cells, which you have in this smear, are not normal red blood cell because their border is not as smooth. You can see crenation in the border and some of them cannot show the central pale. I will talk about them more in the lab for you. And the other egg granulocyte uh, is called uh, monocyte. Uh, the, mono, the nucleus of the monocyte is usually kidney shape or horseshoe shape, as you see in these two pictures. And the cytoplasm is blue gray and it has a foamy appearance. This foamy appearance is due to azorophilic granules or uh, the lysosomes, which we have in this cell. Um, the size of the monocyte uh, is a large, it's uh, the largest white blood cell which we have in um, our blood and you need to know that. Uh, the monocyte doesn't, don't like to live in the blood uh, for a long time. When they come from the bone marrow to our bloodstream, then they only remain in the bloodstream for about two to three hours. And after that, they come out of the bloodstream, come to connective tissue. And in the connective tissue, we call them macrophages. The, and you know the macrophages. The macrophages are the cells which we have in our connective tissue. Some of these macrophages become fixed macrophage and they remain uh, in the tissue when they come inside. Mm, like the alveolar macrophages which we have in our lung or the macrophages which we have in our spleen. But some of the macrophages are called the wandering macrophages. And uh, the wandering macrophages come from the different parts of our body to the site of infection and start to fight with the pathogen and uh, the problem for us. Uh, this is uh, the picture uh, of uh, the macrophage. As you see in this picture, the macrophage is a very large cell. The diameter of the macrophage is 18 to 25 micrometer. The, um, the shape of the nucleus is kidney shape, and you have the indentation, uh, a very deep indentation for the nucleus. The cells contain uh, many azorophilic granules, and these azorophilic granules give a foamy appearance uh, to our cell. And as you see in this picture, our cell contains many pseudopodia. By this pseudopodia, it wants to engulf uh, the pathogen and eat the pathogen. 
in this picture you can see the lymphocyte uh, this is the, the small cell uh, one of the smallest white blood cells which we have you have around nucleus thin rim of blue cytoplasm around the nucleus and this is uh, the monocyte you can see the kidney shaped cell and a foamy appearance the foamy appearance is due to the presence of lysosomes here Now about the white blood cell uh, function. Uh, white blood cells uh, may live for several months or years, and their main function is to combat invading microbes. The skin and the mucous membrane of our body are continuously exposed to microscopic organisms, like bacteria, some of which are capable of invading deeper tissue and causing diseases for us. Once pathogen enter our body, the general function of white blood cells is to combat them by phagocytosis or immune response. To accomplish this task, many white blood cells should leave our bloodstream and go to the site of a pathogen um, and inflammation. But our red blood cells cannot come out of the bloodstream. The process of uh, moving white blood cell from uh, the bloodstream uh, to the connective tissue and to the site of infection is called emigration. And uh, formerly, we call it diapedesis. During emigration, white blood cells, as you see here, roll along the endothelium uh, of the blood vessel. This is the blood vessel, and the simple squamous epithelium of the blood vessels is called endothelium. So, as you see here, these white blood cells, which can freely flow in the bloodstream, can uh, stick to the blood vessel wall and start to roll over uh, the endothelial cells. Uh, and then it can squeeze itself and come out of um, the blood vessels from the spaces which we have between endothelial cells. The precise signals that stimulate emigration uh, through a particular capillary vary for different types of white blood cells. I told you that when we have bacterial infection, the a neutrophil should um, start to fight and start to protect us. When we have parasitic infection, the eosinophil should start to fight. When we have allergy uh, and inflammation, uh, our basophil are starting to work. When we have viral infection, our lymphocyte uh, should work. And when we have chronic problem, our macrophages uh, and our monocyte should work. So we need to have a specific specific signals from a specific type of pathogen. The molecules, which we call them adhesion molecule, help attachment of uh, these uh, white blood cells to the wall of our capillary. And uh, for this uh, specific uh, picture, we have selectin here. These uh, spring-like structures are called selectin. And the selectin stick to the surface of neutrophil and causing them to slow down and roll along the endothelial surface. On the neutrophil surface, you have the other adhesion molecule, which is green in this picture, and we call it integrin. They have tendency toward each other. Integrin and uh, selectin attach together, and then they help the neutrophil to come out of the bloodstream, go to the site of infection, and start to protect us. This process is called emigration. Neutrophils and macrophages are active in phagocytosis. They can ingest bacteria and dispose of dead matter. Uh, 
several different chemicals released by microbes and inflamed tissue that attract uh, the white blood cells which we call it chemotaxis so chemotaxis is movement of white blood cells toward the microbes toward the pathogens and uh, this chemotaxis can take place by the function and by the material which are released from our pathogens so the signals for a special white blood cells is different from each other there are adhesion molecule which attack to one type of white blood cell and help them to stick to endothelium. And selectin and integrin are some examples. We have many more uh, adhesion molecules for our white blood cells. When the white blood cells leave our blood for um, fighting with the microbes, only 2% of them return back to our bloodstream and the others remain in the connective tissue. Um, and some of them enter the lymphatic vessels or they may go toward uh, our skin, lungs, lymph node or spleen. The microbes have continuous access to the body through the mouth, nose, and pores of the skin. Many cells age and die daily uh, in our body, and their remains must be removed. However, a white blood cells can phagocyte um, only a certain amount of material before the ingested material interfere with the white blood cells' own metabolic activity. In a healthy body, some white blood cells, especially lymphocytes, can live for several months or years, but most live only for few days. During the period of infection, phagocytic white blood cells may live only for few hours. The normal uh, number of uh, white blood cells are about 5,000 to 10,000 uh, white blood cells per microliter of blood. When the number of white blood cells increase more than uh, 10,000 per microliter, we call it leukocytosis. So the leukocytosis is the increase in the number of white blood cells and its normal protective response to stresses such as invading microbes, exercise, anesthesia, and surgery. Leukocytosis usually indicates an inflammation or infection in our body. And the other uh, happening in our body is called leukopenia, an abnormally low level of white blood cells. When they come below than 5,000 per each micrometer, uh, we call it leukopenia. And it happens during radiation, shock, and when we use chemotherapeutic agent. And we have a term which we call it a differential white blood cell count or DIF count. It's a very important uh, when we want to diagnose a specific uh, type of diseases. Uh, a physician may order uh, this DIF account of each of uh, the five types of white blood cells to detect infection or inflammation, determine the effect of possible poisoning by chemicals or drugs, monitor blood disorders, effect of chemotherapy or detect allergic reaction and parasitic infection. Differential white blood cell count measure the number of each kind of white blood cell in a sample of uh, 100 white blood cell. Because each type of white blood cell plays a different role, determining the percentage of each of them can help us to diagnose different diseases. It means that, for example, if the percentage of uh, our neutrophil increase uh, more than 70 percent it means that we have bacterial infection if the number of our eosinophil is more than uh, three percent it means that we have parasitic infection so it can help us to determine different types of diseases and problems 
So in general, an elevation in white blood cell count usually indicates inflammation and infection, and a low white blood cell count may develop due to several causes. And a differential white blood cell count can help to determine if we have any problem. The process of a white blood cell formation is called leukopoiesis. The leukopoiesis is stimulated by different interleukins and colony stimulating factors, which I will talk about them in the immune system for you. In this picture, you can see leukopoiesis. Uh, if you remember in our bone marrow, we have pluripotential stem cell. And these pluripotential stem cell can differentiate to myeloid or lymphoid stem cell. When we need a lymphocyte in our body, this lymphoid stem cell can differentiate to T and B lymphocyte, and they can fight with the pathogen. Uh, like viruses specifically. When we have a parasitic infection, when we need to have inflammation in our body, when we have bacterial infection, or sometimes when we have chronic uh, problem, then the myeloid stem cell based on the need of our body can differentiate to the uh, different types of white blood cells like eosinophil, basophil, neutrophil, and uh, monocyte. But uh, for this picture, you don't need to know uh, the different uh, steps. And in this table, you can see uh, the different types of white blood cells, the neutrophil, lymphocyte, monocyte, eosinophil, and basophil. Um, this order is uh, due to uh, their number in our bloodstream. So the neutrophil is the highest. Um, after that, we have lymphocyte, monocyte, eosinophil, and the basophil is um, the lowest uh, number in the white blood cells. Uh, it talks about uh, when um, they're increasing their number, um, what do we have in our body, and when we have low uh, count, um, uh, what can we identify in our body? And uh, uh, the last uh, cell, which is not actually a cell, is a platelet. The platelets are used to do blood clotting under the influence of the hormone, uh, which we call it thrombopoietin. The hematopoietic or hemopoietic stem cell can differentiate to platelets. Look at the next picture. Here you can see the stem cell which we have in our bone marrow, hematopoietic stem cell. When we need to have blood clotting, the thrombopoietin is secreted from our liver. It works on this hemopoietic stem cell and differentiate it to a cell which we call it megacaryoblast. Mega means big. Cario is the Latin name of platelet, and blast is the young producing cell. In this young producing cell, um, we have uh, creation and synthesis of these different granules. And these granules contain different factors, which we use them for blood clotting. The cell which uh, is created after megacaryoblast is called megacaryocyte. The megacaryocyte become larger and it makes many pseudopodia, as you see here. And now look at the next picture. This is uh, the megacaryocyte which you can see in the bone marrow. And these are the feet process which I told you. This feet process penetrates the bloodstream as you see here, the blood vessel, and each of these process start to broken down to a small pieces. Each of these small pieces is one platelet. So the platelets are not actually the cells. The platelets are a small fragments uh, from the megacaryocyte, which you can see them in the bloodstream. They don't have any nucleus because the nucleus remain in the bone marrow, as you see here, and they are very, very small, very smaller than um, our red blood cells and white blood cells. 
So the megakaryocyte in the red bone marrow uh, is split into 2,000 to 3,000 fragments to create the platelet. And they contain many vesicles and they don't have any nucleus. It's very important. The platelet can only survive uh, for five to nine days. And um, in each microliter of our blood, we have 115,000 uh, to uh, 400,000 platelets. So the platelets uh, are uh, the cytoplasmic fragment of megakaryocyte and they can form temporary platelet plug when um, we have any cut in our body and they can help seal uh, the breaks which we have in our blood vessels. Circulating uh, platelets um, are inactive uh, and mobile uh, by nitric oxide uh, and um, a, a factor which we call it prostocyclic uh, factor which I will talk about it in the next video for you. Uh, and these nitric oxide and prostocycline are secreted from our endothelial cell, the endothelial cell or the epithelium of our blood vessels. They age quickly, as I told you, and they, they degenerate in less than uh, 10 days. And their formation is regulated by the hormone which we call it thrombopoietin. Their shape are disc shape and uh, they are irregular. Uh, their diameter is about two to four micrometer and they have many vesicles. Their vesicles contain uh, the blood clotting uh, factors. And uh, the aged and damaged platelets should remove by the macrophages, which we have in our liver and also in our spleen. Um, these are the hormones. In this slide, you can see the hormones which can affect hematopoiesis. Erythropoietin can stimulate formation of red blood cells and it's secreted from our kidney. Thrombopoietin can stimulate formation of platelets and it's secreted from our liver. And cytokines are glycoproteins which can stimulate uh, the pluripotential stem cell to make different types of uh, white blood cells. Uh, the other factors except cytokine are colony stimulating factors and interleukins for formation of uh, white blood cells, which I will talk about them in uh, immunity for you. And um, you have uh, two tables. These tables talk about the different types of cells, the erythrocyte, the granulocyte, the a granulocyte and also platelet, their description, their number, their function, and their duration of their life. Uh, so don't forget to check them. You don't need to memorize. Just uh, check them and let me know if you have any questions.